So the graph series continues as I show you guys how to use the EQN macros. And the EQN macros are, as the name implies, macros that let you typeset equations into various documents. And if you haven't seen my previous graph videos, I made one on the pick, mac pick macros, which lets you draw pictures in documents and a video covering graph in general, um, since, you know, covering the basic MS macros. So I'm going to be showing you the EQN macros. So I'm going to create a new document. I'm just going to call it math.ms. And I'll put a title in here. Let's just say, I'll just call it math.doc. And just say this, or these are some equations. Okay. And then I'll have it um, detect the file type right here. There we go. Okay. Just so we get syntax highlighted. And I'm going to introduce two new macros, and that is EQ and EN. And just like pick, the pick macros, EQ is equation star, EN is equation N. And anything between these two macros will be uh, formatted as an equation. So let's do something simple like A plus B equals C. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and compile this. So let's say graph dash ms, because we're using some ms macros, and dash e for eqn macros, because we want, of course, to format for eqn. And we're going to give it math.ms, and format that to a PDF, and put it into math.pdf. So now, if we go ahead and open math.pdf, you can see we have our math document, but we also have our equation typeset right, type right in the center. So that's the bare bones of EQN. Of course, it gets more advanced than that. So let's, let's I'm going to go ahead and show you some uh, some uh, more uh, equations you can typeset. So um, it, uh, EQN recognizes greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to, etc. So I can say, actually, I can go ahead and say, oh, A plus B is not equal to C. And if I go ahead and recompile that, you can see it recognizes that and prints not equal to. I can also say greater than or equal to C, and it, go, it recognizes that and prints that out. So um, basic, you know, basic symbols like that. Um, let me add a new equation. Just like um, the pick macros, you have to specify a new EQN block for every equation you want to typeset. So let's do the equation for the area of a circle. That is A equals, um, the area equals, and then it's pi times r squared. And in order to actually typeset that, what we do is we give it the variable r, of course. But how do we do r squared? Well, to do that, you say r sup 2. And what sup stands for is superset. And that'll basically superset 2 onto r to give us r squared. And if we go ahead and do that, you'll see we have r equals r squared. But we also need the pi as well. And to get, to get Greek letters in EQN, all you need to do is just spell them out. So I can just say pi. And if we recompile, you'll see we have area equals pi r squared. And this works for, you know, any Greek letters. So if I'm going to add, I don't know, sigma or zeta or omega, oh, it will go ahead and print those out. Um, so that's how you do Greek letters. Um, you notice, though, that all my equations are typeset in the center of the page with a lot of spacing. What if I want to put an equation with some of my text? And that's actually pretty easy to do. What you can do is you can define an EQN block like this. You can say delim. This stands for delimiter. And we would give it two symbols. Um, so I'm going to do dollar sign, dollar sign. And in... in in reality, this, this can be any two symbols. I could do, I could do pound sign, pound sign, or even two different symbols like caret and percent sign. But I'm just gonna stick with dollar sign, dollar sign. And what this means is the, uh, our delimiter for EQN um, equations is between two dollar signs. So I can say 
Um, this is my equation and pretty neat. And these are two dollar signs right here. And whatever whatever you put in between these two dollar signs will actually be formatted as an EQN macro or EQN equation. So if I say, I don't know, one plus one is greater than or equal to two. And we go ahead and recompile this. Now as you can see, we have our equation in uh, inside our text. So that's pretty nice. That's how you put equations inside of paragraphs. And of course, if you want to turn it off later on, you can just say EQ, you can just say delim off, and this will turn delimiters off. So um, it doesn't interfere with, you know, dollar, for you printing dollar signs in your text, anything like that. Um, but that's the basic uh, basics of delimiters. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and actually um, do some advanced typesetting. So right here I have notations, different notations for differentiation. We have Obenz's, no, Obenz's notation, which is this, dy over dx. We have Lorange's notation, which is f prime of x. We have Euler's notation, which is this. And then we have Newton's notation, with it, which is a y with a dot over it. And so what I want to do is I want to typeset these notations into Groff. And it's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's say, if you, okay, let's do Obenz's notation. So this is pretty simple. It's dy over dx. So to do that, we say dy. And instead of doing the division symbol or the slash symbol, um, what we actually do is just say over dx. And so this will quite literally print out dy over dx right here. Okay, pretty straightforward. Next one, um, a range of notation, f prime of x. This one's also pretty easy. So f prime of x, we say f, and then we give it the command prime, and then we say of x. Very, very simple. I'll go ahead and move this. And as you can see, we have f prime of x. So next one is Euler's notation, which may look a bit more complicated, but it's actually very straightforward. So um, it's df in parentheses, and then of x, and that is equal to df of x over dx. And if we go ahead and compile this, you'll see we have our Euler's notation right here. And last but not least, we have Newton's notation, which is probably the most simple of them all. And this is just simply y, y dot. And of course, the dot command just puts a dot over the y, which is pretty self-explanatory. And as you can see, we have our y with the dot over it. Uh, nothing, you know, too complicated. So Let's go ahead and do something a tad bit more complicated than um, just doing dots, I guess, and um, other types of notation. I want to do, um, there's, uh, I want to uh, typeset the Riemann sum, which is, if I find it, um, should be, ah, uh, right here. So this is the Riemann sum right here. And so I want to go ahead and typeset this. The thing is, though, I'm going to typeset a lot of times, and I'm going to show you actually how to create macros in EQN. But first, I'm going to go ahead and typeset it. So let's create the Riemann sum. So let's do EQ, EN. And so I want the sigma right here. So how do you get this um, giant sum symbol or sigma symbol? Well, to do that, we just do the we just do sum, the sum command. That simple. And we say, so it's from i equals 1 to n. So we say sum from i uh, equals 1 to n. So I'll go ahead and recompile this. Now we have our sigma right here, or sum, that says i equals 1 to n. So next we have our section right here, which is f of x with this these little symbols right here. So to do that, we just say f 
of x, and then we say we want a i down here, a subscript i. So instead of saying sup for superscript, we say sub for subscript. We say i. And then we want an asterisk right here. So that's a superscript sub asterisk. So we say sup for superscript and then asterisk. So go ahead and recompile this. Ooh, that doesn't look good. You can see that our asterisk is a little, and our parentheses a little off. So how do we fix that? Well, in graph, you can actually group together parts of equations with curly brackets. So what we want to do is we want to group together f or x sub i and x sub i and sub asterisk. So let's group these together. So x sub i, and then group together that whole section with sub asterisk. And so if we go ahead and compile this, you can see now it's more or less correct. So now we have our final portion of the equation, which is delta x and a sub i right here. So we just say, move my head. Um, so we say delta x and then sub i. We compile that and it looks pretty correct, except for one thing. The delta we, we get is actually a lowercase delta and not an uppercase delta. So how do we get an uppercase delta in this case? Well, to actually get any uppercase Greek, Greek letter, for that matter, what you can do is you can actually just type that Greek letter in all caps, in this case, um, uppercase delta, and it will go ahead and print in uppercase delta, like that. Okay, so here, oh, yeah, here is our Riemann sum. And if I go ahead and scroll down, I want to typeset, let's just say I want to typeset the Riemann sum a lot of times. Um, you can actually create macros in EQN. So I want to turn this all into a macro. What I can do is I can say define, use the define keyword, and I'm going to call this Ryman. And I put this in single quotes or double quotes, whatever you want. And what this will do is this will define Ryman as this Ryman sum right here. So go ahead and do that. As you can see, it disappeared because we don't actually call Ryman. We just define it here. So if I create a new line, I say Ryman, it will go ahead and print out our macro. And then of course, you know, if I want to print this out like two more times, or two, three more, whatever times, I can just say Ryman. So now we printing it out four times. So if I go ahead and recompile this, you can see we have our macro right here. So pretty efficient. Um, but I want to actually put this in another equation, which is, uh, if I can find it, uh, here we go. Uh, the Riemann sum with integration, or in, with the, de the definition of a Riemann sum with integration. So to typeset that, we can actually use our Riemann definition. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all of this right here. So let's go ahead and typeset that. So what we want is the left side, which is actually pretty straightforward. So we want the integral from A to B. So to do that, we say int for integral, and we say from A to B. Simple as that. And then f of x times dx. dx, and then the equal sign. So if I go ahead and compile this, you see we have our integral right here. Okay, pretty simple. Um, so now we want our limit and then our Riemann sum. So to get the limit, we say limit from, and, we, and our limit is from delta x to zero. So limit from delta x, and then to get the little arrow symbol, we just say, uh, we just do a dash and a right bracket, and we just get this to, you know, put an arrow here, which is pretty straightforward and zero. So now, we go ahead and compile this, you can see that our equation is wrong. Oh boy, what did we do wrong? So, you can see that only our delta is below the limit, and x to zero is somewhere, for some reason, over here. Well, guess what? We have to use brackets to group this together. So let's go ahead and put brackets around delta, and then, uh, or delta, and then zero. And then also this has to be in a um, 
absolute value symbol. So let's go ahead and put pipe symbols there for absolute value of delta x. And you can also see our delta is lowercase. So let's go ahead and put that, make that an uppercase delta. And if we did everything correctly, our equation should be correct. There we go. So now all we have to do is put our Ryman macro right there. And now it should automatically put our entire equation in there. Pretty cool. So now our entire um, definition of an integral is, or Ryman integral is right here. So one thing that's bugging me though is that the spacing between this sum, or this um, sum right here and this limit is pretty close. I want to space it out just a bit more. To do that, you can actually do that in EQN. To do that, you can actually use the tilde symbol right here. And a tilde just inserts a single space into your equation. And then if I want, if, let's just say I want to put like five spaces in here, I can put five tildes. And that will put five spaces in between my limit and my sum right here. So go ahead and do that. And as you can see, it's a lot of space. Um, I, only want, I only want one, so let's go ahead and do just one. And there we go. We have a tad bit more space than we would normally have with, um, you know, having it normally formatted. So I want to do one more equation. Um, and this equation is going to be um, pretty simple, but I'm going to go ahead and insert text into EQM. So I want to do a, a formula that is um, something with economics, let's just say. So to do that, uh, to put text into EQN, you really don't need to add that much. Um, all you really need to do is just specify what text you want. So let's just say, I want to say income over capital. Oh. Just say we want that. Here we have income over capital. We don't need any special um, parentheses or anything like that, or anything like that. We just type what we want. Um, of course, if I want to say income over capital and then say over, I can put that in quotation marks and it will go ahead and print the word over instead of, you know, actually creating a, you know, a fraction. So if there's anything you want to put in there that's, that's technically an EQN command, just put parentheses around it and it'll print it out in EQN. So I want to say income over capital and then say that's equal to in, income, can't spell for some reason, income over sales. And then to actually get the X symbol for multiplication, we say times, and that's going to be sales over capital. And we go ahead and compile this. And there we go. We have our um, equation form, uh, formatted with text in it. So that's really the basics of EQ1. You can do a lot of stuff. As you can see, we've already types, uh, typeset a lot of stuff in here, but it's a very easy to use, very easy, even easy to read um, equation formatting system. Like you could go through here, all these um, EQN definitions, and you can um, definitely write the, or read these and understand what they are without looking at the PDF. So it's really easy to understand, really easy to use, and I'd reckon it's, it, um, it's better than the math uh, typesetting system in LaTeX, to be honest. Like I prefer this over LaTeX. Um, so that's that's EQN. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, it's pretty pretty fun to use, to be honest. Um, I'll actually I think I'll link some more stuff for EQN in the description. But yeah, for now that's it. I'll see you guys whenever.